Flying Fox Brutes here today with a video. This video today is about Garcinias. And now keep in mind, the Garcinias we're gonna talk about today are ones that can handle pretty hostile conditions. My property will get down as low as 25 degrees or lower. Since I've been here, it has. And I've had to protect them by covering some of them, keeping them in pots, some of them in the greenhouse. I've got some planted in the ground outside, in the ground in the greenhouse. But these Garcinias I'm gonna show you can definitely handle temperatures between 30 degrees to like 110 degrees. And they don't, that's not to say they like that, but they'll take it. And I think I've got about five or six species, maybe not even, that I can show you today. And then maybe some extras. Uh, Let's feed the chickens really quick. I got some fermented feed here and I, I didn't get to ferment it as much as I like, but they like it wet down a little bit there. Usually like to ferment it for a couple of days. I got some cat food to throw in here. Get you some of that cat milk. Get you out of here, boy. Here, get you some. I don't want the older, ch I want these other chickens to get the cat, the cat meat, the cat food. But they won't let them have it. I'll put it over there and pray. Look at them go. Now let's go show you some Garcinias that my hands are smelling good. I'm going to wash them off over here in this pond. Look at that. And then enjoy my coffee. Come on. Look at them in my dang pot. They're tearing my pots up. Watch out for those chickens. The, uh, the aseal chickens are, are a little more uh, destructive when it comes to plants and, and containerized plants. All these other chickens that I've raised have never been as destructive as those. Like That's the pit size bulls. Of, what's that? So they're like pit, pit bulls. Pit bulls, they tear it up. They're monsters, but I love them. And they, they haven't done any really, really bad damage. Hopefully they'll grow out of it. Let's start them off with this one. So this one's from Africa. It's called Imbe, Garcinia Livingstonii. I think Livingstone, Livingstone, Livingstone was a explorer or something like that back in the 1800s. Got some plants named after him. This is a really strong tree. It takes a flood. All these Garcinias I'm gonna show you today basically take a flood and take some drought. They got these long tap roots. And uh, I like to grow them in the deep pots or the root pruning pots because they got these long tap roots that just go down forever. Look over here. This one is a a, uh, a self-fruitful specimen, which is unusual. Now, keep in mind, when you're collecting Garcinias, some of them from the old world, in particular, I've noticed, are going to be dioecious. And then some of them from the new world, I haven't noticed that as much, where there's, you know, you've got plants that have two separate forms, one that makes male flowers mostly and the other that makes females flowers mostly but that's not exactly how it works what I've found is when they say some of these are dioecious you can get males that make a lot of male flowers but also androgynous flowers with both parts and then you get the females which make a bunch of uh, female flowers without the male so it's kind of confusing I think that's the way it was for me anyway because I've seen females by themselves that wouldn't set fruit but then I have seen males that made a bunch of male flowers that also threw out androgynous flowers or female flowers. So these are some flowers right now. Let's see if we can show some of these, if they're male or female. These look like males. The females are gonna have a little green looking ovary at the end that looks like a fruit. But those are males. I see pollen, it's just a male flower. This has fruited, it's never made a huge big crop or nothing, but it has fruited and made some delicious fruits. So I keep it here just cause it's so pretty. This thing's gotta be 12 years old. And I heard it came from Adolph Grimmel's property in, in the Keys. Um, I got it from Larry Schatzer. He had some on his property that had kind of been cast aside and were just forgotten about. And I said, will you sell me some of these? He said, okay. He sold me some. And it was already probably a five-year-old tree by the time I got it, you know, about that big and a taproot on it like that. And I, I showed it some love and I couldn't believe it was fruiting all on its own. So um, I would advertise this as if I sold Scions ever, I would try to call it a a male that's fruitful sometimes like you would want to if you had a female plant you'd want to graft this one on because it would be a male branch that might actually make some fruit instead of just a male branch that doesn't make fruit if that makes any sense anyhow i don't see any fruit on it now but it has fruited this year 
This over here behind the shade cloth, carefully, watch your step. This is one that's called Luke's Garcinia. And it's named after a gentleman named Luke Vleracker in um, uh, uh, Puerto Barriata, Mexico. And this one is flowering. And it makes uh, androgynous flowers, or female or androgynous. And it has set fruit. It's got one set on it. It's had some set. But it just started really flowering as of lately. And they, they've been falling off, which is normal. It's been very, very hot. But um, this tree right here is also probably about 10 years old. And if you see down at the base, it's been planted in the ground in the pot, but I cut holes in the bottom of the pot. So I don't even know why I did that. I think I did it because I was afraid the root ball would fall apart when I went to plant it. So I just cut holes in the bottom of the pot. And um, I've been taking a lot of scions off of this tree. Look at the cuts. You see where the tips have been cut? Cut right there. And uh, I cut it up a bunch. And it seems to not mind it. It's supposed to be a delicious fruit tree, man. I'm talking the fruit's supposed to get about that big. Edible skin, delicious uh, acid sweet flavor, more sweet than acid. Um, you can, most people plant it from seed, but I, I graft it onto the lemon drop mangosteen, which is Garcinia brasiliensis, a, a more popular fruit that's widely available and easy to find rootstock, so I can graft this. But to tell you the truth, I don't think anyone was grafting this at all onto anything, and I was the first to figure out that you could graft it onto Brasiliensis and make a marketable product. Do you believe that? Come on over here. So this is the rootstock that I used for that tree over there. And I figured, you know, I was out in the grove one day and I had already seen some people mixing this up for that. They were like, oh yeah, I got Luke's Garcinia. I said, you don't got Luke's Garcinia, you got Brasiliensis. And so I said, you know what? They look so much alike. I got a bunch of these and I don't have a bunch of those. Why don't I try to graft that onto this? By golly, it worked almost every single time. And I started selling them plants for buku bucks, buddy. Check them on eBay. Flying Fox fruits, all right? Look at the fruit on this. Now, the lemon drop mangosteen is one that I just love. And this has been underrated and neglected in South Florida. People go, oh, it's not a mangosteen. Oh, it doesn't, it's small and there's a big seed. Oh. Well, it fruits all the time. The fruit are full of antioxidants and nutrition and vitamins and minerals and whatever the heck. They're good for you. The pests don't bother them. The rats don't bother them. It, you only need one tree, can take a mild freeze. It's about as cold tolerant as a mango, maybe a little more. Uh, this one I did cover, you see these posts. I've got about three posts around it and I wrap it with a big cloth and I go over and over with a frost cloth. So I protected this when it went down to 25 degrees. It didn't skip a beat. It held fruit through the whole thing. This is one of my favorites, but this is the common variety. And did you know there's a superior variety? It makes a larger fruit with like a nipple on the end. This one's round. You can eat the skin and all on this, but the skin's astringent. It's an acquired taste. I like the skin. Did you know the sap that leaks out of this is called gamboge? The sap that leaks out of all of them is called gamboge. And they make products and nutritional and all this medicinal stuff from the sap that comes out of Garcinia's. Come over here. Yeah, I like that. They call that Garcinia Intermedia, but I call it Brasiliensis. You can debate me on that all you want, but I don't care. This one is the Achechiru. Now I recommend if you're gonna grow this Garcinia Humilis is what I believe it's called, the botanical name. If you're gonna grow this specimen right here, get it as a grafted plant if you can, because the seedlings I've noticed, if you're pushing the limits or you're growing them in pots and you can't plant them out, it's gonna take forever to flower. This one hasn't flowered yet. It's probably 12 years old as well. It should have flowered, but a freeze came through and knocked it back. If this thing was planted in its native habitat or like Puerto Rico, Hawaii, somewhere where it stays warm, it would have been 25 feet tall by now. But this is what happens when you put them through the freezes and you don't water them enough or you don't feed them and they don't have everything they want. They'll live, but they're gonna take a longer time to fruit. They're gonna stay stunted but I'd rather have a stunted tree that fruits a little bit and be the only guy in town that has it than not have it at all. Does that make sense? Let's go over this way. So this is the superior form of the Garcinia uh, 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 brasiliensis. They call that Basupari lemon drop mangosteen, as I said before. You're gonna notice a lot of these Garcinias and fruits out of Brazil that aren't even Garcinias have the name Basupari, B-A-C-U-P-A-R-I. And that is like a general name almost like plum or apple where a bunch of things are getting this name 
when it's kind of a general name for a lot of the fruits. So it's really good to know the botanical name. And even if you know the botanical name, there's people debating, is this Garcinia Intermedia? Is this Garcinia, did the camera mess up? No. Is this Garcinia Intermedia? Is this Garcinia Brasiliensis? It's like people are gonna debate the botanical name. I don't do that. I just say what I think it is and leave it at that. This one's making fruit out here. It fruited really fast, this one did, from seed in about three years. It was the smallest I've seen fruit from seed. And it fruits quite well every year. It gets really, really hot right here. When we had a freeze one year, I just took a 100 gallon pot and put it right over it. There's another fruit set down at the bottom, but it's hard to see. Here we go, I'm pulling weeds at the bottom. There's some, uh, there's another fruit in here somewhere, let's see. Usually have a bigger crop than this, but right now this season's been ridiculously hot. They handle abuse, let me tell you. So this one makes a slightly larger fruit with a nipple on the end. Uh, I got more Garcinias over here. And now keep in mind, like I said before, these are all ones that I recommend for people growing in containers, greenhouses, pushing the zone limits. If you're somewhere where it doesn't freeze, well, go ahead and grow the king of queen of fruits, the purple mango scene. Well, I can't get away with that unless it's a grafted tree and I keep it in the greenhouse. Maybe a rooted cutting, I don't know it. But this is another seedling of the superior variety of the uh, lemon drop mango scene. It's been fruiting for a while. Let's say their botanical name again, Garcinia brasiliensis. The fruits are small right now because it's a little bit neglected, but um, this is actually, I think there's like an intermediary form. It's like, I see a middle point between the superior and the common, and this may be that. I haven't seen this fruit a bunch yet. It's only fruited sparsely, but uh, we may walk over to the greenhouse and try to show them the superior and show them some of the Garcinias in the ground. Let me show you a few more out here in the yard. Oh, okay. This is, Garcinia xanthochymus. They used to call it tinctoria. And uh, it comes from, this is one of the ones that comes from the old world. All of, well, this is the second one I've shown you so far that comes from the old world. It comes from Asia, I believe. And it can take a ton of cold, man. This thing can take, I think probably down to 20 degrees, maybe lower. I could be wrong about that, but I've never seen one damaged by the cold severely ever. They're tough as nails. They take a while to finally fruit. I think they might be dioecious. I can't confirm or you know that or not, but it may be dioecious. I planted several out here. They grow them at Fruit and Spice Park if you want to taste them. The fruit gets big. It almost looks like a canistel, you know, like a yellow top, shiny, waxy, glossy, very sour. So you're going to want to use it in the same way you would like a lemon or citrus. It's got this crazy sour flavor, but to be honest, it's delicious, all right? I like them. I, I remember going to Fruit and Spice Park and it was the first Garcinia I could really taste and they're everywhere on the ground, big, juicy, and I'm like, ah! And then I was like, well, this is a Garcinia, you know? I was like, I want to eat a Garcinia. And I was like, all right, this is good, but you gotta have, you gotta, for me, like mix it with sugar, make a juice out of it, add some sugar, phenomenal. There's one planted in the shade over here, look over here. I had one, I just threw it over there in the shade just to do it. But you see it over there among the philodendrons and between the pines and all. It's gorgeous. <laughs> I haven't ever watered that tree. It just does it on its own. Would you believe that? That's the saying of the day. Would you believe that? And then look at this. Look how pretty the leaves are when they come out with that violet. Let me get it up in the light. That violet coloration. It's like an animal. Oh, when the new growth comes out, it's gorgeous. Like. It looks like leather that's made out of like purple, purple leather pants. Like shiny rock star leather pants that would be on Tina Turner back in the 80s, man. That's why I grow it. That's it, I don't care about the fruit. I'm thinking about Tina Turner's pants in the 80s. Whoa, did you see that G with his tail bit? I'm just gonna stay away from this tree. I don't even know if we can show him this tree, Angel. Woo, that's a thug right there. You see that lizard? He's about it, about it. This is his whole territory right here. First off, let's introduce the tail chopped lizard. We're gonna call him, uh, 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 uh. We'll call him, uh, 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 Bruno. Uh, he's on a Garcinia dulcis right now. And I can't really confirm if this is dulcis or not. I got it from a collector labeled as Garcinia dulcis. It looks just like Garcinia xanthochymus. I don't know how to tell them apart, really. And the difference between dulcis and xanthochymus is, I've heard the dulcis makes a sweeter fruit. 
So that's about it. A little bit smaller fruit, a little bit sweeter fruit. So I don't know if they're the same species that's being renamed one sweet, one's not. I, I don't know if this I don't know if this is a sweet variety of Xanthochimus that I got labeled as dulcis. It's confusing to me. But I got this labeled as a so the person that sent it to me said this fruit was sweet. It it was yellow. It looked just like Xanthochimus, which is dulcis to me. But they said it was dulcis, we'll find out. Beautiful tree. This one right here is a grafted Garcinia brasiliensis of the superior form in a container. Nice deep pot. I'm planting these in the ground. This one got a little root bound, a little dry. Look, it dropped a fruit. Look at, it's got the little nipple on it. Let's see what it tastes like. It's old, it looks nasty. Still white on the inside. It means it's still good. It looks still good. Garcinia brasiliensis. Got a little bit of a nipple on that one there. Let me show you this other tree. That one was recently planted and hasn't gotten in the swing of making the big good fruit yet. This is my, my one of my best trees and it makes a beautiful fruit. I don't know if we have any on here though. Got flowers. Flowers, yeah. Show what you can on here. I'm looking for a fruit. But this is my big one that, that makes a nice big fruit. Anyway, I don't put no pesticide on it. I do fertilize it with Espoma. And you know, there's one more over here. I think we'll end it with this one. Yeah, I didn't see any fruit on it, but it is flowering. Those Garcinias fruit for almost half a year or more, just so you know it. <laughs> All right. This one, Garcinia gardneriana. And it's a lot like the lemon drop mangosteen, except it makes a bigger fruit, has a thicker skin that's not really eaten. And uh, I think it has a bigger seed too. I'm gonna plant this one in the ground, right about here, where I'm standing. And I'm excited about this tree. And I'll have to cut it back, I'll have to cut it back, but that's fine with me, because it'll fruit on the old wood. It fruits on the old wood, and I'm gonna be grafting. I, use, I like to graft these, this is a wonderful tree. Only need one tree. New World Species from uh, the south of Brazil. I think it's from Rio Grande do Sul. I probably said that wrong. Correct me in the comments. Thank you for watching the video. This is all about those Garcinias. I'm thinking if I'm forgetting one before I end the video. No, that ain't. No. Yeah, you're right. He got me. Let's show him that. We just planted this one in the ground. This is the one we just planted in the ground, but look at the spread on this. Thank you, Angel. Mm -hmm. and look at the flowers, a little grafted one. This one's already fruited up a storm. But this is a little grafted one I took from that big tree, my best tree over there. And this is the one, you know, I've been grafting exclusively off my best tree in the ground that makes the biggest, best fruits. I just call it a superior lemon drop. Let's show them some Jabbity Cabas on the way out, Angel. There's some fruit on some of them. Keep walking down. There you go. Some fruit right there. If you want to pick it, you can. There's some on this one, too. We'll probably do another video about these in the greenhouse next. We're setting you up for the next video about Jabos in the ground in the greenhouse. They're getting in gear for the big crop coming this spring, y'all. We got it all right here at Flying Fox Fruits. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe and share with all your friends. Tell your neighbor. Get in there and tell everybody. Have a great day.